Hello and welcome to Explore the Source, a GUE TV production. And today I have the pleasure to speak with Laura Maroney, exec Executive Vice President at DAN. And uh, for many of us, DAN is a household name, but Divers Alert Network, for those not aware, and you may not know, but I've been actually a DAN supporter for about 30 years now. Wow. So I've been a member, <laughs> uh, insurance buyer, and purveyor of your various uh, expert opinion and support and had the pleasure to even meet your father and many uh, excellent people at DAN, so well, great. Thank uh, you, it's an honor to have you thanks <laughs> as very a long time member. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, I'm looking for my uh, special golden symbol. Yeah, uh, I will work on that. <laughs> so I think many people know DAN, but I'd like to explore it a bit more for those not aware of its structure, and we have many different topics we're gonna cover. Uh, I think we have at least a half a dozen different topics ranging from research to uh, activities in the DAN network and uh, uh, things that you're seeing that are occurring with divers. But as we start out, I want to ask a little bit about the structure of DAN. So how is it, how is it organized around the world? Um, so um, we try to cover uh, uh, the globe as much as we can, the world. Uh, and uh, so from the beginning, we, real we realized that um, uh, the best thing would be to divide uh, the world uh, in different areas and to have different offices to look after uh, these various parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Um, so ANIDAN, International Dam Federation, uh, exists, but it's made of uh, different organizations. Uh, we all follow the same mission uh, and goals, but we are independent uh, one from, from the other. Uh, so we have uh, uh, DAN America, uh, and uh, uh, we also had DAN Asia Pacific, that is now part of DAN, uh, of DAN America. So mm -hmm. uh, it's centralized uh, in the headquarters in, in uh, Durham, uh, in uh, North Carolina. Uh, then uh, there's the Europe, uh, so us, <laughs> and uh, we are based, uh, historically based in, uh, in Italy, uh, mm -hmm. that's where we have our uh, headquarter, uh, and, uh, and the second office in, in Malta, and we cover um, all the geographical Europe, so all countries bordering the Mediterranean Sea, uh, plus some other uh, territories like Egypt and uh, the Maldives. Mm -hmm. Uh, then there's then Southern Africa, uh, so they cover all the uh, sub-Saharan uh, part of Africa, uh, including Mauritius, Seychelles, uh, and these islands. Uh, and then there's then uh, uh, Japan, uh, and they cover Japan. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's good because it would be awkward if they covered something else. <laughs> well, yeah, the name is pretty specific. <laughs> so how many how many employees, roughly speaking, are we looking at globally? Do you have a general sense of that? Uh, that's a nice, uh, a good question. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you uh, the precise number for what concerns Europe. Okay. Uh, we are uh, almost 70 um, um, employed, um, I mean people employed directly by, uh, by the foundation and the insurance subsidiaries. Uh, and then we have a network of uh, uh, about 100 doctors uh, because we have to cover a lot of languages. So um, uh, these doctors don't actually work in our office, but we have uh, a network uh, um, of them and they, they work from their own mm -hmm. countries. Uh, and then we also have regional representatives uh, in the various uh, European countries, again, to help us with uh, managing all the languages. Okay. Uh, at the US, uh, they are slightly bigger than, uh, than us in terms of uh, members. Mm -hmm. uh, so they also have uh, quite bigger stuff, I would say they are pretty much uh, double the size. Okay. Um, and, uh, and they also have their own uh, network of, of, of referral doctors uh, okay. around the country, especially uh, even more now that they um, merged, uh, let's say, with, uh, with Dan Asia Pacific. Uh, mm -hmm. So now they have the great um, uh, I mean, challenge to, to, to also cover a lot of uh, languages of the world, including yeah. Chinese, uh, Indian. Seems like a nightmare, so to be honest, on. just based on my language experience. Well, <laughs> Yes, but, uh, um, but we, we, luckily enough, uh, we've been, uh, I mean, um, all of us uh, are used to deal with emergencies pretty much everywhere in the world, so sure. we have uh, a very good network of uh, um, preferred providers, uh, and we, I mean, we, we are used to dealing with uh, hmm. the most remote uh, places of the world, so languages are, are not really a nightmare, but <laughs> they are an operational <laughs> challenge. They're a beautiful <laughs> cultural diversity. Yes. <laughs> which is challenging to manage. <laughs> uh, so then we have a lot of people, so you know, hundreds of people in, in the end. You also have volunteers and doctors and lots of people in support. Um, what's something that we might not know about Dan? Uh, uh, another very good question. Thank you for asking. Okay. Um, so I would say Dan is mainly known for its insurance services mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, divers at some point, uh, the, 
learn that they need uh, diving insurance to cover very expensive uh, hyperbaric treatments. Uh, and that's one of the main reasons why they get to know done. Uh, but we are actually uh, much more than that. Uh, we uh, were born as a medical uh, and, and research foundation and our main uh, um, objective, so the, our mission is to make diving safer and we do that through investing a lot in research uh, activities um, and uh, so research and scientific activities and, and I think that this is very good for, for divers to know because uh, we are behind uh, many of the uh, rules that divers follow uh, to, to, to practice this, this sport in a, mm -hmm. in a safe way and I'm talking about for example uh, uh, protocols about flying after diving or uh, PFO and diving, uh, uh, diabetes and diving. Uh, we, we've studied all of these uh, uh, issues throughout the years. Don't give away too much because we're going to cover all that in, uh, yeah, in the coming okay. sessions. <laughs> okay so research is the thing a lot of people are missing which I know a lot about having exposure to that but I think that's a, really an important aspect. Insurance people are aware of the research now we are aware of and this, the call centers and the education component is quite significant mm -hmm. as well. So really a, a diverse range of support. Uh, so I want to break that and we're going to talk a little bit about the emergency sp support in the next session and then we're going to flow on down into some of the really cool research that Dan has been involved with. Uh, so hope you'll stick with us. Uh, we'll be right back and see you on the other side. <laughs>